Hey, Will. I want to play some kart racers. What do you got for me? Why don't you play some Mario Kart 64 with me? I don't know, man. I've played too much Nintendo lately. I need something new. Well, what else is there? N64 has the best kart racers. Hey guys, I got kart racers on the PlayStation. Whoa! LEGO Racers was developed by High Voltage Software for the Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, and PC. This kart racer is LEGO-themed, but specifically the 90s era of LEGO sets being produced at the time. Stages and characters include astronauts, pirates, knights, and who could forget Johnny Thunder, everyone's favorite Indiana Jones ripoff. Perhaps the biggest draw to LEGO Racers is the Builder Mode, where you can design your own racer and build your own kart. You start off with a handful of parts and slowly unlock more pieces by winning circuits and doing certain challenges. The design menu is pretty fleshed out, and you can even enter a name and personalize your license photo. My only issue is that you can't rotate the cart while building, so it makes placing bricks quite challenging. The game has a variety of features for your standard cart racer. The main mode is a circuit mode where you can race in a series of four tracks against AI opponents. Each circuit is hosted by a boss racer, and you must reach a certain number of points by the end of the circuit to progress to the next one. There are seven circuits with 26 different tracks. Twelve of these are just mirrored tracks, but it is still a substantial amount of content. Tracks even have little puzzles to unlock secret passages, as well as stage hazards which keeps you on your toes. There are also single races and versus races, which are against either an AI opponent or a friend in a single track race. You can only race in these modes on tracks you have unlocked through the circuit mode, so the use of memory cards is highly recommended here. The power-ups in this game are color-coded and broken down into four categories. Projectiles, Hazards, Shields, and Turbo. Picking up one of the colored bricks will allow you to use the level 1 version of that power-up. By picking up the white power bricks, you get an upgraded version of whatever power-up you are currently holding onto. A level 1 red projectile will shoot a plain, boring cannonball, while a level 2 one will shoot a grappling hook that slingshots you past your opponents. To do well, you have to strategize your power-up pickups and familiarize yourself with what each level of the power-ups do. If you pick up a different colored power-up than the one you are currently building, the combo starts over. There were times where I was trying to get a level 3 projectile, and then I would accidentally pick up a green brick and it would restart my combo. The system is pretty impressive for a kart racer in this era, and I was pleased with the variety of power-ups in this game. When playing, you can definitely tell its age, but it still controls fine. Turning sometimes feels unresponsive and inaccurate when going fast, especially when you are aiming for a specific power-up for your combo, only to grab the wrong one. Those situations are make or break for a first place finish. Thankfully, the game boasts a pretty good drifting system, which helps on tight corners. Some tracks, specifically the jungle-themed ones, were a bit dark, but the colors were diverse enough for the visuals. The soundtrack and sound design are also nothing really to brag about, but it is acceptable. The one thing I hate is that since you have to rely on the power slide to aim your cart, you constantly have to hear the cart screech noise every five seconds. Overall, LEGO Racers is a fun time if you are itching to play a creative cart racer. It's fast-paced decision-making during a race to get the right power-ups or choose the right shortcut sets it above other cart racers. And it's pretty affordable, too. So I was not a PlayStation baby. I did not play Crash Bandicoot as a kid, nor did I play Crash Team Racing before this video. I always had an N64, so my racers were Mario Kart 64 and Diddy Kong Racing. After playing both of those for the better part of 25 years, I know both of them fairly well. CTR to me kind of feels like a weird combination of the two of them. 
The tracks in Adventure Mode feel more like Diddy Kong Racing, while the items in Driving feel like Mario Kart. The game plays pretty okay. Unlike most kart racers, you can actually see the stats of the racers, which I really like. I typically like having racers with higher acceleration, so I'm going to be giving Coco a try. The courses are pretty straightforward and have fun designs. It has all of the normal kart racing things you would expect, like items, boost pads, drifting, etc. One thing that is unique is it's collectible that speeds you up. Like with regular Crash games, you pick up apples. The more apples you have, the faster your top speed will be. Unlike others, however, when you have the max of 10, you become juiced up. And not only do you go a lot faster, but your items are supercharged as well. One thing that CTR seems to have done before Mario Kart is if you hop off of something, you can pull off a boost with good timing. The driving is a little rough around the edges though. I don't really feel like I have control, and whenever I crash, it doesn't feel like it should be my fault. I've given Coco about two races and I'm not really feeling her that much, so I think I'm going to give another character a try. Wait a minute. Once I start a file with a character, I'm locked in for that entire playthrough? And apparently this game does not have an autosave feature. I guess for a PlayStation 1 era game this was to be expected, but I'm so used to having one now it feels really annoying to lose progress because I forgot to save. Oh well, luckily I didn't play too much. I guess Coco is harder to control because she has a very poor turn stat, so I think I'll give Crash a try. He's well-rounded in all stats. Playing as Crash has immediately improved my enjoyment of this game. What felt like a pretty mediocre kart racer at first is actually turning out to be really fun. The start boost in this game feels great when you nail it. The drifting is tricky but fair, and the game actually lets you do some cool tricks that feel incredible when you pull them off. Once you beat four races in Adventure, you go against a boss. Some of them are... interesting. <laughs> Yee. They can be really hard. You'll have to know the mechanics of this game pretty well in order to get through them, so you better listen to those Aku Aku hints in the overworld. I actually learned a lot from them. For instance, he told me you can hop rapidly to shake TNT crates off of you before they explode. Knowing this made the first boss a lot easier to deal with. Beating bosses feels really satisfying in CTR. After you beat one, you can go into the next world and find more races and- Oh, that's how I'm supposed to save? You have to drive up to these big TV screens in order to save, and driving away from them is really a pain. Some of them are pretty hidden as well. Why would you hide the mechanic for saving? I actually managed to miss one of these in the first world, and I would imagine some kid in the 90s did as well. Kind of an oversight in my opinion, especially considering most kids are bad at video games. Overall though, CTR is a very fun kart racer for the PS1. Does it rival Mario Kart or Diddy Kong Racing? Not really, but I still think it's worth playing. And who knows, maybe with the upcoming remake on PS4, Mario Kart 8 might get dethroned as the current king. Yeah, what's up, Doc? Bugs Bunny is one of the most beloved cartoon characters of all time, and Looney Tunes was one of my favorite shows growing up as a kid, so when I stumbled upon this game at Goodwill for a dollar, I knew I couldn't pass it up and brought it home with me that day. So I didn't have much expectations with this game since you won't find it on any best of PlayStation list or anything of the sort, but apparently on the back of the box, GameFan.com claims that Looney Tunes Racing might surpass Crash Team Racing as the best PlayStation kart racing game to date. Now that's quite a claim, so is it true? Let's find out. 
Looney Tunes is pretty bare bones when you boot it for the first time since there's a championship mode to unlock more tracks and characters. There's also a single race to replay those stages and characters you unlocked. A challenge mode where you do various events such as having to hit enemies a certain amount of times with items and having to place top 3, collecting certain amount of notes in under a minute, or even collecting the letters B, U, G, and S in that order and getting top 3. Does that remind you of Donkey Kong anyone? And a multiplayer mode that I never tried out since my friends don't want to play with me. Sad face. Alright, now let's start off with the controls. Thankfully there's no major issues on that end. Every character plays the same so if you basically choose characters on your favorites. The controls are tight and responsive and the drift only takes a couple of uses before you get the hang of it. And you get to make sharp turns with ease. I was worried that the controls were going to be bad but it's definitely on the playable side. So this soundtrack is unmistakably Looney Tunes but after a while it becomes repetitive to listen to and honestly I could live without it. The soundtrack is the weakest part of the game but is by no means painful to listen to. At the very least the soundtrack is something you would expect in the background of a Looney Tunes episode and is typical from a licensed game. Oh boy, what gameplay is included with the disc? So with as most kart racers you have the championship mode that awards points for the top 3 places and includes 4 tracks per cup. Uh, the weapon system is point based and you collect points worth 1, 2 or even 3 points. The weapons get better as you get more points and are as simple such as from a pie that acts like a green shell in Mario Kart since they only go straight. Or if you get the max amount of points you can get a speed boost and temporary invincibility. That's what I try to do as often as I can since it's the best item to achieve victory. The next big thing that makes this game different from the competition is that there's these acme arches that you can go through that trigger different Looney Tune style effects you can cause on the track. Rolling boulders and falling anvils are amongst a couple of my favorite effects you can use to slow down your opponents. And the challenges are a good way to have some variety when you're bored of the typical kart racing and reminding me of mission mode on Mario Kart DS. The challenges are a good way to have some variety when you're bored of the typical kart racing and reminding me of how mission mode on Mario Kart DS provided a different gameplay experience when I'm not playing GP mode or playing multiplayer with friends. So how did this game live up to the hype on the back of the box? Let's say this game is one of the better kart racers not named Mario Kart and it'd be cool to see this game get a HD remake or a bundle alongside Looney Tunes Space Race but that's highly unlikely. That's all folks. 